welcome to 2023 with Agnes Kunkel. In 2020, the world was hit by COVID-19. It was like a time machine. Find out what the world might look like in spring 2023 and how we will need to adapt. 2023, your window to a world beyond COVID-19. On the weekends, the Miller family usually visits the New Rock Center for climbing and exercising in the neighborhood. This center has been established after the COVID pandemic to revive the city, along with renovating and opening new bars and restaurants nearby. After the family finishes their climbing routine, they often go for a refreshing drink in one of the bars close to the Rock Center. Bars became such a trend during the last couple of years. They are almost like restaurant substitutes, as no one can really get a table at a restaurant without a pre-booking and order nowadays. The family is walking around, checking which bar they'd like to enter. Melanie and Christy are searching for the most colorful place possible. Melanie says, We want to go somewhere cozy and colorful. And Christy adds, That serves ice cream. Both parents knew this could take a while until the girls settled on a place together. So they pick an attractive bar just around the corner. This place has a very attractive design, a few small round tables, round frames on the walls, and also a place to sit outside, comments the mother Zenia. Thomas agrees and chooses a table just beside the door with flowers next to it. When Christy checks the menu board and the menu app, she cannot find her favorite ice cream, and she gets a little upset. They don't have my favorite chocolate chip ice cream. Can we go someplace else? Thomas replies, we can go, but afterwards. Or you can try a new ice cream flavor. Maybe it will be your new favorite, Christy. The girl takes some time to think while her parents make their orders through the app. They notice ice cream flavors are presented in short, nice videos online, so they show it to little Christy. She is excited to try out a new fruit mixed flavor ice cream, as it looks so delicious in the video. After 10 minutes, their order arrived with cleansing sanitized tissues to use before eating. Christy is very surprised that this ice cream did indeed become a new favorite of hers. Hello, I'm Agnes Kunkel, your host in 2023, your window to the world beyond COVID-19. Today, we are just hitting 21 million confirmed cases worldwide and over 760,000 people have confirmed to have died from COVID-19. The curve of new daily infections seem to flatten just below 300,000 cases per day. This number adds up quickly to a million. Here in Europe, we see unpleasantly rising numbers of daily new infections. UK now demands a two-week quarantine from people coming from France or Netherlands. Countries like Spain and Belgium had already been on the list for a few days or weeks. Today, it's 14th of August 2020. Our guest today is a wonderful Alison Perlman, the author of Smart Casual, the transformation of gourmet restaurant style in America, and May we suggest Restaurant Menus and the Art of Persuasion, a book that found great attention around the world. May we suggest was highly praised and recommended in several well-known papers here in Germany. Alison Perlman is professor of art history at California State Polytechnic University, Ponoma, a brilliant thinker writer and researcher in an area that touches everyone, food, and especially wonderful food served in great restaurants. Welcome, Professor Perlman. Well, thank you for having me. I hope I can live up to your wonderful introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. Professor Perlman, your greatest passion are restaurants. And as I understand your publications and your books, you don't hold back from experimenting on your own. And I guess you have spent quite some time in restaurants of all kinds in the recent years. Do you go now already again to restaurants in this COVID pandemic? Well, the truth is I go more often now. Uh, I would say three times a week rather than maybe 
one that I might have done before. Uh, but these visits are completely different now. Um, I go for takeout only, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I go to restaurants only within walking distance, and I go only to the same few places that we trust. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> this, this, now, this is part of a deliberate strategy on my part to support restaurants, first of all, mm -hmm. uh, but to also to do so with the least uh, risk, Mm -hmm. and to, to safety and um, while also taking the opportunity that I have to drive less. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Also, yeah, but very wise what you are telling, very wise, very clever. Um, during these restrictions, uh, we see a lot of stress to the restaurants and uh, the severe economic crisis. Uh, I hope you are not personally so negative affected by these experiences, uh, seeing that maybe beloved restaurants are struggling for their survival. Well, I should tell you, you in Germany are way ahead of us here in the United States, uh, specifically Los Angeles, where mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, here, dining rooms in restaurants, uh, your listeners should know, are closed mm -hmm. again. This is for the second time. Oh. Oh, no. uh, so right now, as I speak to you, we had restaurants, the dining rooms were allowed to be open, and then they were closed again. Mm. Uh, and so we have not gotten the COVID situation under control. Mm. And this is even worse for restaurants <clears throat> than closing once mm. because the, the uncertainty makes it worse. Mm. Uh, and, and for your listeners, uh, you know, around the world, I should mm. explain just how dire the situation is in the United States, mm. uh, n especially if they're not as familiar with the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no other industry in our country has been hit harder in terms of job losses and revenues. Mm -hmm. um, we have in the U.S. we have uh, a one quarter, one quarter of the workers in the United States who have lost their jobs mm -hmm. are restaurant workers. And, it, you know, in we just had in July uh, the, the Yelp, mm -hmm. who, whose research has reported that 60 percent, 60 percent of the restaurants that had to close temporarily mm -hmm. have now closed permanently. Oh, no. Uh, yes. So it, it, this has been so devastating uh, here. Um, it's very, very sad. And so when you ask about negatively affected, I should say two things. Mm -hmm. One is um, I don't work in the industry, so I am mm -hmm. not affected mm -hmm. personally, financially. Mm -hmm. But um, as you can imagine, it has been a great loss uh, socially and aesthetically. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and by being so careful myself, of course, and restricting myself to the local walking distance, you know, I, I've lost one of the great pleasures of urban life. Yeah, yes, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. What you are telling is really shocking. Uh, of course, I did some research, uh, but this had been, of course, a little bit outdated, not so, let's say, up to date for today, as you told us this now. And um, what does this mean? Of, for the year 2023, when you go to the city, what what will we find? What will we see? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, assuming COVID is under control, and this is a very big assumption yeah. <laughs> by by 2023, I, I, I think it will be under control mm. by then. Uh, maybe not for a year, but but by 2023, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, I believe I believe we will, restaurants will be back open, but they might not look and function the same way as they did before COVID. And I'm sure we will get to all of that in our discussion. Mm. Uh, and uh, the ones that that are closed for good now um, will be taken over by new owners, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know the the as they call them the vulture the vulture capitalists mm -hmm. are are fly, are flying over the skies right now, 
uh, looking for possible carcasses. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think, you know, that you you will see a turnover in ownership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they'll be open. In our story, the father, Thomas, and the two daughters, uh, they went to a park enhanced in a city a city revival project. And afterwards, they just go to a small bar and have some drink and maybe some cookies. <laughs> As, of course, uh, economic situation for many people is very severe. And maybe, I guess, even now, or let's say in the years uh, lay laying behind us, for a family, uh, it was quite luxury or even not affordable to go to a really stylish restaurant. And I guess it might be even more difficult to do so in the years ahead. Well, yes. And uh, I mean, it, it certainly that is one of the major variables uh, is what is people's discretionary income? Um, mm. That will that will determine a great deal about what happens, in fact, in the future. Uh, uh, who knows? You know, it took us in the U.S., it took us, uh, I don't know, seven, five to seven years to get over the recession mm. we had last time. And mm. this is much, 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 much worse. So, so of course, uh, that is a, a, a large um, variable indeed. Mm. Mm. Uh, one idea from the story is that maybe even for saving money, for working more economically, uh, restaurants or smaller bar, restaurant type uh, places may try to make it uh, necessary to pre-order, to do maybe to check in with the app. Uh, not only for a table, but even for the meals and the dishes you want to order, maybe even to pay in front for the meal. And that uh, for a real restaurant, you won't go spend uh, just spontaneously. You will it do for purpose and you will check in via app. Could that be possible? Well, it, some places are already doing that, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's certainly this sort of like uh, to reserve ahead so that restaurants can um, uh, basically um, make sure that they don't have a crowd, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a bottleneck mm -hmm. of of people showing up and creating a, a distancing problem. Of course, that's one of the things that that people are doing now. But I I think if if the threat is no longer there, uh, I think it, most places, most restaurants, especially the more casual restaurants, mm -hmm. will not will will not want to do that mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, and and that's because the, for the same reason they didn't want to do it before, which is that many restaurants depend on people making last minute decisions mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to dine in a place. It, and it's a very important part of the business. So I don't think, you know, unless we are talking about a fine dining, basically what we what we had before COVID mm -hmm. is, is, is would still be the operating logic, I would think, because mm -hmm. you, you can, uh, reserving ahead really restricts the customers mm -hmm. that you can have. And mm -hmm. even the very, you know, upscale places uh, still w want to, to have some walk-in mm -hmm. uh, customers mm -hmm. because it's just they can't depend on long, you know, long-term planning for, mm -hmm. for people. Okay. And it risks, ris yeah. So I don't think that's really, if there is no longer the threat, I don't think we will want to have that. You see not so much change there. No. What about your beloved menu? Uh, yes. in your highly praised book. <laughs> Could you imagine that it slightly or even more quickly changes to some sort of an app? I have seen things like that, maybe not pre-ordering, but when you go to the restaurant, then you get the tablet and then you uh, order via tablet. Uh, that maybe uh, it's done elect ordering by the guest uh, electronically and that apps maybe at home or in the restaurant uh, replace the classical paper 
uh, menu as we know it? Well, uh, this is you raise uh, uh, two two different de devices, <laughs> basically two different scenarios. There, mm -hmm. one is the the tablet in the restaurant, and the other the app that uh, the mobile app, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, both of which exist today uh, and and existed before COVID. So uh, the the tablet is a special case because the tablet, and I don't think the tablet it will replace the printed menu because mm -hmm. uh, any any more than it already has just uh, unless uh well that depends on style and what people get used to it, mm -hmm. it just as it, but nothing related to covid mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. because uh, uh because some formats uh, because it's not safer i mean you're touching a surface yeah. it, it's it's actually worse than a paper menu that you can <laughs> throw out uh but 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 a mobile app is a different situation because um, you know we and we've become accustomed to to this to these digital apps uh, mm -hmm. anyway, uh, I, and I, I write I actually write a lot about them in the book. Uh, mm -hmm. But I you know I love a beautiful textured printed menu you know like just as much <laughs> as anybody else. But the digital menus do the, and the apps do have their own particular charms for mm -hmm. the consumer and the and the uses. Um, the most important one for the consumer, I think, is that they can offer the diner this choice to click on an item, you know, and get more information about it, mm -hmm. uh, which is very useful um, and for, you know, for us as consumers. Now, th that is, I think, probably the best um, advantage that the apps have and that they will continue to to offer Uh us as consumers. I think there are a lot of other advantages for the digital, the mobile mm -hmm. apps as well. But most, I think those are advantages for the restaurateur and not mm -hmm. for the consumer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, because, because um, the thing about the, the mobile menus being put in into uh, mobile apps is that they, uh, the app can structure people's attention mm -hmm. much better than a printed menu. And so because you have to go through a series of screens, you your attention can be focused on particular promotions and offers in the in the order that they want you to see them mm -hmm. and can suggest also targeted to you personally Mm -hmm. based on your previous purchasing habits and your the information the data that they may have about you that you can't do with a printed menu so mm -hmm. these are incredible marketing advantages that will uh, continue uh, very much in the future because of the marketing advantages mm -hmm. so yeah i understand you correctly that from marketing advantages it might be possible that restaurants promote apps intensely. Definitely. Uh, oh, but here's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> here's the here's the thing I would say to as a twist on that is people don't. Well, this is well known within marketing circles that people have app fatigue. Mm -hmm. So so they they don't want so many apps on their phone. Mm -hmm. So, so you're not going to have a lot, all people downloading apps. Um, what what people are turning to more and more now, and this is something that has accelerated during the COVID nineteen crisis, mm -hmm. is uh, the Q, QR codes. Mm -hmm. So, so no longer do you have to download an app now. You, anything you can do with an app, you can do with a QR code. So mm -hmm. you just point your phone at um, the QR code and um, you don't have to download anything and it will take you directly to the site um, website that, mm -hmm. you know, would have would be basically function as the mobile app. Uh, just when you are talking, uh, the idea came in my head, might uh, organizations like TripAdvisor or stuff like that where you have many restaurants in one platform, my which, by the way, I don't like at all. <laughs> yeah. 
to me it's just a horror <laughs> yes as it's not uh, you spoke about the pleasant experience uh, as i would when i like a restaurant then um, i don't think it is a pleasant experience to go to something like tripadvisor or whatever it may be <laughs> and that may be Some restaurants uh, in a town or in a city form a corporation to bring out a pleasant experience uh, for ordering and um, uh, bringing the marketing, let's say the, the brilliant marketing aspects of these tools uh, in work, but to make it pleasant for the customer or the restaurant guest. Well, I, I think what you're, you're really um, hinting at is, uh, and what, what the answer will depend on, I think, is, is the how the power struggle plays out mm -hmm. among, among the digital companies, because, and who, who takes over whom, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, will, who will prevail Uh, you know, will it be the delivery app companies that like uh, Uber and mm -hmm. um, uh, DoorDash or, mm -hmm. or will it be Google and TripAdvisor mm -hmm. or will who who will uh, be the umbrella over whom mm -hmm. and who will be? See, this is what what the answer will be. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, however, uh, the problem for restaurants is very enormous here because yeah. right now. Uh, uh, you, you may know um, that the restaurants really hate these apps. Yeah, uh, of I course. Mean, uh, you know, they, everyone. The, yeah. Well, <laughs> perhaps uh, customers seem to like it, and that's the problem for restaurants. Is that you know, customers are doing responding very well to the DoorDash uh, and their ilk. Uh, but mm -hmm. but the the uh, restaurants it's taking 25 to 40 percent of the restaurants profits yeah. on the items oh no so that is the problem and the restaurants many many of them feel that they have to be on those apps or else they will disappear uh, from the customer's viewpoint mm -hmm. uh, and that is the problem but they would rather not be on those apps mm -hmm. so if if you know and this again is about uh, in the if we're looking into the future, We, we have to ask, you know, what new services, what new technologies, what new possibilities for restaurants might develop that would enable them to get their power back? Because uh, right now, um, and maybe the QR code will help, will, <laughs> will help, will, will, will evolve, uh, you know, because, because right now it's a stranglehold on the industry. I have to admit, I am not a good user of QR codes. Can you <laughs> can you explain to our listeners, I where do I pick it from? Uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? It's so much easier than an app. All you have to do, if you have, if any anyone who is able to take a picture mm -hmm. with with their with their phone, can use a QR code. Because and you don't have to have any special software. The phones, all you have to do is you you swipe to take a picture. You you mm -hmm. put your camera up to the QR code, which is just a graphic. Mm -hmm. to, it's just a graphic. Uh, it could be physical, like mm -hmm. on a doorway. You can you can print ah, out a QR okay. code mm -hmm. and you can post it anywhere in the city, or you could put it on a computer screen. You can put yeah. it anywhere in the world. Yeah. And and you just point your phone to the QR code, and it immediately immediately takes you to the website, okay, or wherever. Yeah. So you don't have to download anything. You don't have to do anything. You just immediately go where yeah. they want you to go. Okay. Thank you for this explanation. Uh, you can yes. put it on. Maybe I walk, I stroll through the city. And then yes. I go to a restaurant door, and there is a QR code. That's it. That's it. So. When we go back to the idea, how will our cities and the restaurants and the diners look in 2023? Uh, we have now talked about the menu. What about the dishes and the offerings we have on the menu? Do you think they will change? Maybe simpler, less, less uh, items, maybe more simple items? 
what would you expect? Well, right now, um, in the COVID era, I guess you could call us, mm. uh, the menus are being simplified all across the industry. Mm -hmm. So every everything from McDonald's to fine dining mm -hmm. restaurants of the highest reputation, all of them are simplifying their menus. And mm -hmm. that doesn't just mean cutting the menu. That doesn't, when I say simplifying, mm -hmm. it doesn't just mean smaller. It, it, it also just means less complicated in the preparation. So mm -hmm. in it, so um, it, in that way, we, we have actually witnessed a massive compression in the range of the style of restaurant food, I think. Um, uh, almost everyone has gone to more casual, more home mm -hmm. home style uh, in the direction and in the direction of dishes that don't require many people to assemble mm -hmm. or that have that have intricate presentations. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what has been happening. But I suspect this, I really believe that, you know, that this, we will, when we no longer believe we are in danger of a pandemic, mm -hmm. I think this trend will go away. Mm -hmm. Now, the, there is too much professional ambition at stake, especially in gourmet dining. Mm -hmm for us to continue to see this. I think it, this is a temporary situation because, um, it, it, and, and I hope it doesn't because we see everyone is just doing really casual homey food. And I think, unfortunately, that is just a lack of range right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, not to say that there isn't a great range in the quality or in the creativity in what they're doing, mm -hmm. But stylistically, it's mm. an unfortunate shrink, uh, shrinkage of mm. the range of possibilities. And I don't think from a professional standpoint that restaurateurs will want to uh, continue that. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That is quite plausible what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. When we are talking now about shrinking, I pick mm -hmm. your word and your formulation. Uh, might the restaurants itself shrink to be smaller, cozier, less expensive to rent? Uh, well, I'll tell you, um, the size of restaurants, um, to some extent, the sizes will probably remain the same. I think if you're talking about the architecture, Mm -hmm. uh, yes. It, be, yes. Because there, there is, there's only so much change that can happen to existing architecture in such a short period of time. But some quick service restaurants, I should say, especially chains, uh, chain restaurants that today, today that today are building new units and planning ahead, right? Mm -hmm. They're planning ahead. So this yeah. means also into 2023, uh, are building them smaller. Mm -hmm. And if possible, with more area given to the uh, window or curbside pickup mm -hmm. uh, stations and or drive through lanes. Mm -hmm. So I, I would expect that to continue that is because, of course, that is also their planning into the future with that. Uh, so and that is a testament in part to how much people have used delivery devices, the, the delivery apps, of course more and more even before covid uh but with covid it makes it even more um uh significant that, that there, as a possibility so i think that's true uh with places that can really thrive with that sort of deli like delivery and pickup especially um, but i don't think smaller size will be desirable for all kinds of restaurants of course uh certainly not ones that depend on a full service or mm -hmm. a, a good a ser a service environment. Mm -hmm. And even in places where service becomes more automated mm -hmm. uh, or, co or contactless, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm joking, partly joking when I say this, but the, the robots might still see, need some room to wander around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Indeed, um, indeed. Uh, yeah. When we Uh, speak about pick up uh, delivery curbside and all that stuff what came to my eyes 
at the moment even more uh, high quality and even in direction of fine dining, as you told me, go to uh, pick up. Uh, when we imagine, and you are thinking about aesthetics and uh, all the refinement and all that stuff, what does this mean to the packaging? If we mm -hmm. take, uh, let's say, a little bit more classy, maybe not top class, but a little bit more ambitious, a little bit more ambitious restaurant, uh, bringing food outside by pickup, Will they put effort in the packaging or at the moment? How, how does this work in the moment? Well, the, the, let's, let's uh, for, for the, the very fine dining uh, restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, we, I will say in a phrase, the bento box is back. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the bento box is in. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so we're actually seeing a lot of creativity going into this area and mm -hmm. so to the extent that this will c that that places like that will expand or continue uh their takeout and delivery uh options um that you will see see a continuation of the creativity in this direction so we are already seeing restaurants really thinking of it because they can't do They can't do the beautiful plating, you know, the beautiful plate, you know, the, the beautiful presentations on yeah. the plate, you yeah. know, which really uh, uh, separate them from other yeah. places. And so now uh, we're seeing uh, beautiful boxes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, the bento box is wonderful because, uh, and the reason that they were used before Mm -hmm. is that the items don't move yeah you know you can't you don't you don't have a problem with tra transportation you know so you can really uh, create these really beautiful mosaics mm -hmm. of food in 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 these boxes and so the bento boxes is kind of a model for this but there are other other ideas and the other thing i would say with packaging and creativity in this area is not only choosing, for example, sustainable packaging, right? We, we want uh, restaurants that care mm -hmm. uh, and that have as part of their ethos, mm -hmm. a sustainable model that they will choose sustainable materials. So that's one thing to, to um, that is, it will be, continue to be important, but, but also uh, the beautiful, the artistic and personalization. So, mm -hmm. for example, you know, we have now the in in such a, a model of takeout and delivery, we have the absence of persons, right? Mm -hmm. The absence of persons. And to replace that to the extent possible, you can have personality. So uh, that means uh, notes from the chef, uh, maybe mm -hmm. a handwritten note, uh, mm -hmm. something with instructions on how to... Uh, 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 put the food on the plate or how to re reheat something, mm -hmm. uh, reheating instructions uh, that come along with it, something mm -hmm. just to, something nice and personalizing mm -hmm. to put into the package for people. So that packaging really can become an opportunity to to exp you know, to to convey the values mm -hmm. of and the personality of the the, the brand, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. That will be very important as long as the takeout and delivery continues. And I think it, it really could as long as uh, the the uh, labor that it takes to produce that. If, I mean, if, if we go back to a situation where we have fully booked dining rooms, right, and the mm -hmm. restaurants are fully functioning the way they were before, um, whether or not this will continue is a matter of... Um, is it profitable to do it? Um, I mean, it does you, because people, the, the good thing for that is that people will have become used to it. They, they will be accustomed to this way of ordering food, even from a fine dining restaurant. Mm -hmm. So if, if people get used to something, usually it continues, but only if it's really profitable. Um, right now, a lot of places are doing that operating barely at a profit, if at a profit, 
some places are, are doing things now that are actually not profitable mm-hmm. and they just want to employ their staff or keep their staff employed. So some of the practices that are happening now are not entirely indicative of what is actually profitable. Okay. <laughs> In front? Uh, but, uh, it, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you have to also realize that that in the United States there are these very strange, uh, you know, <laughs> perhaps uh, regular um, like un- benefits, for mm-hmm. instance. Like we have this paycheck protection program mm-hmm. uh, that came out in the beginning of the COVID crisis, which many restaurants cannot use at all because it's not functional for them. But some of them that did do apply for these benefits Mm -hmm. it requires them to keep a a large percentage of their staff employed Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so some of them are doing this to do that and to keep their staff and to keep their family together Mm -hmm. right in a sense their their professional family together and are doing all kinds of things and still may be operating at a loss so you have to think about that in front of my eyes, I have now a mouth-watering bento box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Filled beautiful. With many delicious little right. items. Right. And on the other hand, you spoke about maybe after COVID-19, 2023, we have again fully booked restaurants and they don't have the time for doing these little mosaics. <laughs> I have read about uh expression which sounded to me not so uh, mouth-watering ghost kitchens yeah might it be that these uh creating bento boxes and that stuff might be outsourced to some big places uh, on the edge of the city or even maybe uh somewhere in the globe where Uh, cheap labor is preparing stuff and then it is brought by refrigerated containers or a fleet of refrigerated uh, cars to the restaurants or maybe even it doesn't go to a restaurant but it goes uh, immediately to a client who has ordered uh, food for his party at home or, or something like that. Well, I, I think for the, the restaurant industry would probably make a distinction between those two practices. So, so the for example, the kitchens that, and this has been a common practice for many years in the industry, um, where for restaurants that have multiple locations, uh, they have co- what they're called commissary kitchens, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that, that is a practice that's been going on for a very long time. And uh, it's just an efficient, uh, it's always been an efficient model for delivering the same food to, you know, that doesn't need to be prepared a la minute, you know, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. To, to, to the restaurants that are part of that, um, lo- uh, that area. But... Um, Uh, so that will continue, I'm sure, because it's always been there and it makes sense economically. Mm. Uh, but but it probably do- it doesn't really exist that much and probably will not for that segment of the industry that feature that features a chef driven or more spontaneous menu. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, what we call what we call ghost kitchens operate differently from that. So those are commissary kitchens. Ghost ki- because they serve restaurants, mm, yeah. but what we call ghost kitchens operate very differently. Now they are not suppliers of restaurants with dining rooms; they are substitutes for them entirely. Mm-hmm. So ghost kitchens are delivery only businesses mm-hmm. that consumers access by app. They mm-hmm. have a di- digital president presence. They have a digital presence, and that makes them appear like restaurant brands. So, so and some people order from them not even knowing that they're not that they're not places. They're not, oh, they're not I understand. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. That's what we call ghost kitchen. So ghost, and that's why I guess the word ghost is is sort of <laughs> funny because it makes it a little scary, right? Yeah. You, like you you think you're ordering from a place, and it's not really a place. Um, And often these kitchens are, some of them, especially the most successful, uh, there are large brands that are national or even international brands that, that have operate these kitchens all over the place. And they, um, some of them have multiple, 
have multiple brands inside their premises. Mm -hmm. So, for example, they have they have like a, there's in within the same building is a Chinese uh, brand and then a, a Italian food and then a, another thing and e each each going out for delivery under the brand a different brand name. Mm -hmm. that this so if you go onto your doordash app you know mm -hmm. and you order from you know the 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 you know hunan kitchen you know you, you it, it you could be ordering from one of these places that has multiple kitchens going on so uh, that's the ghost kitchen and they deliver delivery only and the digital present presence um so th the, uh, the the ghost kitchen works um has been a surging business. Uh, and it, I, I imagine that it will continue to be that way, especially as uh, more and more people are, are get, getting very fond of ordering through these delivery apps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're very economical, as you can imagine, because mm -hmm. They, they you, the, for your saving on labor and um, architectural uh, mm -hmm. maintenance of a, of a dining room. That's a lot of money yeah, you're saving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. big investment and they can just save Absolutely. It. And by the way, yeah. maybe it's even uh, mixed with these uh, commissionary kitchens, no? that you maybe you have mm -hmm. your, you have your ghost kitchen and the ghost kitchen also draws from commissionary kitchens or from uh, mm -hmm. even staff prepared somewhere else where labor is more even cheaper. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. That's yeah. That's very, mm -hmm. very interesting. I never have heard mm -hmm. before. I, 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 uh, if, uh, so thank you for your mm. <laughs> um, kind explanations of all that <laughs> stuff. And sure. Uh, when we think about um, the bills we have to pay and the profitability of segments in a restaurant or a pl place where you go to eat and to drink, might it be be that more bar type style which has the larger drinking menu uh, which typically as I understand is more profitable for a restaurant or a bar and a very small dining uh, menu maybe not a la minute uh, or more or less not a la minute more or less Uh, drawn from maybe some commissionary kitchen uh, to make a profitable business in 2023 to see well, these more more tapas bar uh, styles mm. uh, places uh, in compared mm -hmm. to real restaurants. Oh well, well I, 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 here's the there's a potential. It depends on if, if, are we still afraid of contagion this is the mm -hmm, <laughs> you know that mm -hmm. right in 2023 do, do is the, are we still worried about that that's that's the question i think and 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 if we are uh it's funny that you you mentioned you know the tapas bar style kind of thing because in some ways that that may be the opposite of what we see mm -hmm. uh because because i say this because it it those formats are very um conducive to conviviality and sharing mm -hmm. right we want we but tapas is a, a, a shared you know shared snacks shared plates mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. you know well, i mean if 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 what is happening now is any indication of a future trend you know and i don't know that it is if we're completely finished with this by 2023 and people don't remember this anymore Uh, then maybe we will have some of that. But if we are still worried about that, then I think this we have cut down on all of the trends mm -hmm. that existed before pre uh, COVID that were about sharing. So, yeah. sh uh, you know, shared plates, we don't have that. Uh, e even in the, we, we've cut down on that. We've cut down on, except, except for takeout and delivery, where you have more family meals because people are trying to sell larger items for larger prices. So for takeout and delivery, going to a single household, you know, the sharing is good. It, they mm, want that. Yeah. But, but, but we, in a, in a physical location, that is not what 
the tre- where things are going. And and in fact, uh, the other trend related to this, which is the communal table, the you know yeah. all of that uh, that's gone too because you can't have that. You can't have that kind of conviviality, let's oh, yeah. say, as we used to to have. So I, in many ways, those trends are very pre-COVID. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. <laughs> uh, when you are not an expert in these uh, stuff like you are, uh, then uh, you are easily mixing up things. But hopefully in 2023, we will have forgotten about contagious Right, and we will right. sit very close and <laughs> be able to. Well, share you know, I, it occur. It occurs to me. Uh, it occurs to me that it, by participating in your 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 podcast, I am designing my own future embarrassment mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> as I pre- as I predict things that 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 will soon that will in 2023 we will revisit and yeah. and I will find out how wrong I was. <laughs> no, no, no. I guess you you did wonderful predictions. So we'll see. <laughs> when we think of our dear listeners, would you would it be able or would you be able to to summarize a little bit where you will th- see the most important trends that could materialize in the next two to three years or let's put it that way that will materialize when the fear of covid is gone if it might be 2022 or 2023 or 2024 right yes uh well okay in i think maybe the practices are different outside of the u.s but in the u.s we will i uh, uh hopefully um, finally get rid of tipping. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is a, a practice that, that siphons money away from the restaurant operation and that many yeah. have been d- decrying for years as not an equitable practice. And of course, see, we have right now uh, here, you know, two simultaneous tre- trend lines going on, one of which is the COVID and, you know, um, design related to to um, more safe safe mm-hmm. operations but 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 some of it is also about equity and mm-hmm. changes that are happening or people who are raising their voices about other changes that need to be made in the in the restaurant industry that are kind of also happening at the same time so I think this is one that could really hopefully hap- uh, happen mm-hmm. Um so the the tipping model, maybe we'll get rid of that finally. Uh, and um, another thing, uh, kind of on a different tack, is um, related to maybe hygiene and safety mm-hmm. measures. Um, if uh, if if restaurants have greater costs due to um, more hygiene and safety measures, which they will, they already are enduring tremendous extra costs to uh, put up barriers or do things like um, sanitize more frequently. All of that is costing them a lot of money, Mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, The protective equipment, all of that is costing a lot. Uh, So going out to eat at a full service restaurant might become more expensive, you know, Um, and and getting rid of tipping will also at first appear to raise prices. So we we can be looking at a different environment, um, a different landscape of restaurants in terms of the cost. So that's Mm -hmm. another angle to think about. Um, I think that the co- contactless ordering and payment is probably here to stay, mm-hmm. um, especially with the QR codes that we talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see also continuing creativity with takeout and delivery services. Mm-hmm. So like what, and this includes, I would say, not just the, the packaging and communications uh, that we talked about earlier, but I would say also an expansion in what restaurant brands are selling. Um, uh, because one of the things we saw with, or have been seeing with co- under COVID is uh, an, an expansion in the possibilities of what a restaurant will sell. And so this this includes things like um, meal kits, sort of chef curated 
mm-hmm. meals or, or, or specialty items, pantry items mm-hmm. uh, that are special, maybe spice blends that mm-hmm. the restaurant might uh, prepare. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I, or also we have seen um, virtual cooking classes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so under the ba- banner of a restaurant brand, we can see them selling things like that and and that is an expansion in the possibilities of what they what a restaurant can sell so that that's all potential um i think in terms of of um architecture Mm -hmm. we we can see uh more quick service chain chains of course continuing to design smaller layouts as we talked about before more emphasis on the pickup and delivery and more automation uh, so we've already been seeing this in the industry, more robotics, more anything that can be automated will be automated. Uh, you know, uh, so if there is a machine that can make French fries, which is what's happening now at one of one of the chains in America, uh, then that's what they're going to do yes. uh, as much as possible. Uh, creative artistic barriers between tables in full service restaurants. We're already seeing people doing that. It's already happening. Co- beautiful, colorful uh, glass or mm-hmm. beautiful text textured partitions. Why not? It's, mm-hmm. It can be become part of the environment. Um, continued visibility of food preparation is very important. Mm-hmm. So because establishing trust is one of the most important mm-hmm. things that a restaurant can do. This is the most basic thing that a restaurant needs all restaurants have to do is establish trust so in the past and this is a in the long history and in also continuing people would like to see th- how their food is being prepared so we've already been seeing that as a trend uh and it, i think that's necessary to continue mm-hmm. um e- even if there's a glass partition in front of it it, and, you know, if it makes sense and if laws permit, we'll see more outdoor dining. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, you know, we've seen, seen a lot of that right now here. Uh, why not? If you can do it during the summer, if it's possible to have little um, more courtyards and, or mm-hmm. parking spaces, then maybe we'll see more of that as well. So that's mm-hmm. what I that's what I would. What you say. are predicting from your glass uh, I know. This crystal is what I'm ball be about from your crystal ball, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Professor Paulman. I would think we could talk on for hours <laughs> till it's 2023. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now I have the picture of cozy separates with wonderful glass uh, stained uh, and ornamented separations and. Yes, uh, it was so many insights, and I th- I, th- I would not be surprised if we see maybe some broad spectrum uh, mm-hmm. uh, where the one go in this direction and others go in another direction. I guess we will see a lot of change, and uh, it was really, really impressive how you painted like an artist <laughs> these pictures what type of restaurants and diners and pickups we will see and um i would be very glad maybe in some time to talk to you again uh maybe uh in a little bit more uh, f- uh, friendly situation with covid <laughs> covid a little bit more Uh, uh, restricted and on the downside and moving away and um, no it was absolutely as I have to admit of course I'm like dining myself and had some time to time been seen in a restaurant uh, and seen in good restaurants so let's hope Professor Perlman that we will see great chefs and great cuisines and uh, great restaurants again again and that all these many many people now without work can go back to good restaurants and work in some appreciated uh, and supported way and make our life more great yeah. wonderful <laughs> I, I, hilarious I, I hope so <laughs> I, I really hope so. Yeah. And I have to say, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Mm, just from my side. And so uh, stay safe. And you too. <laughs> enjoy your pickup meals. 
your bento Thank boxes. You. And Thank I'm you. absolutely sure in a few uh, months we will talk again to do a resume of what's happened in between. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Professor Thank Perlman. you, too. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to 2023. To get in touch with us with your comments or ideas, or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, just email hello at 20-23.earth. You can find even more material, including transcripts of our interviews, on our website at 20-23.earth. Please keep in mind, the content of this podcast is our opinion. We work hard to get our facts right. However, if you find something that can be corrected or improved, please email us at hello at 20-23.earth. If you haven't already done so, we'd be grateful if you would subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you happen to listen. Thanks for listening, stay safe, and there will be springtime in 2023.